give you Mountain John Zilliga. So good to have you all here. This is not a class reunion. This is not a family reunion. This is a gathering of people who all need one another. I was sitting down in the desert swapping jokes with a friend of mine named Bartender Jim. One night this fellow walked in to look like Errol Flynn and everybody around there called him Brenton Press 10. I could tell by looking by the look in his eye that he'd been struck by the fever that had made other men die. Hell, I'm the sort that likes to sit and snort and sing songs and travel all around. But my friend Tim, he's the kind that dreams of gold mines and digging holes in the cold Yukon ground. Not too long ago, he got a letter about gold from a friend of his up Alaska way. He said, Trenton pressed him, it's time to trade it all in. Go get yourself a good running truck, son, and a few hundred bucks, because I've already staked out the claim. Now listen close. I ain't telling a story. This is a true story about a good friend of mine. And if you think it gets boring and you fall asleep and you start snoring, you're going to miss out on a hell of a fine. <laughs> Tim sat down at the bar and he ordered up a drink and he started talking real low and slow. And we all listened and we watched as he pulled out a hand-drawn map and showed us right where he was fixing to go. Way up north, past the Arctic Circle, where few men have ever survived. You know, an X marked the spot where an old cabin stood not far away was the mark for the gold mine. An old drunk by the name of Frank Clark said, Why, son, you'd have to be crazy to go up there. There ain't no way you'd ever last. Why, 40 below and 75 foot of snow in five minutes, you'd freeze your skinny young Southern California. <laughs> Tim took a big drink and he shot back a big grin and he said, Frank Clark, who gives a shit? He said, I'll give it all up. I'll have nothing left just to go up yonder and clear my mind a bit. He said, I'm going by God. I've seen enough of these hot desert nights, and I've got me a dream of digging a gold mine down by a stream and seeing them northern lights where the rivers are frozen clean down to hell and the wolves could eat a man whole and where there ain't no rattlers and there ain't no sand, just snow and plenty of gold. And where the nights last all winter, and even though you stand there and shiver, you could hear a man breathing for five miles away. You know you've got to have nerve and be 95% insane to want to go up there and stay. Well, that, my friends, is Yukon Tim, who gave his damn printing company back to the Southern California banks, and he left the hot desert nights on the 1st of July in an old beat-up 1954 primer grade four-wheel drive Dodge Army ambulance. <laughs> and I wish him good luck as I throw down a buck and order another cold beer. And next spring, when he returns with money to burn, we'll probably all still be sitting right here. <laughs> and he'll tell us his tales of the kind of jails that a man can create in his mind on a cold Yukon night when you're so full of fright that there ain't no gold in your gold mine. He'll tell us all of the beginning of fall when darkness covers the land and the northern lights shine down so bright on the soul of a lonely gold mining man. Me and my friend, old bartender Jim, we both sat there in that bar and heard that story that night. We watched Brent and Press Tim turn into Yukon Tim, and then I sang him a song that I knew all about the northern lights. Now I hope you listen as I sing you the tune that's always been his request. Because whenever I sing it, he always remarks, Hey, Mountain John, I like that one the best. <laughs> Last night while I was out of ride, that old graveyard ship, midnight till dawn. You know the old moon, ah hell, she was as bright as a reading light. For reading a letter from an old friend back home. He asked me, why do you write poetry for your money? Tell me, why do you sing songs for short pay? Boy, you know you ain't getting nowhere. Oh, yeah, and you're losing all your long hair. <laughs> Don't you know you must be going crazy out there? Well, I read on down the last of that old letter. And I store, tore off the stamp and I saved it so he could give it to my good friend, Black Jim. And when old Billy, when he rode up to relieve me, 
He just took a look at that old letter and he grinned. He asked me, why do you write poetry for your money? Tell me why do you sing songs for short pay? Boy, you ain't getting nowhere and you're losing your share. Don't you know you must be going crazy out there? Thank you and good night. Drive